guys, so today I'm going to be talking about Aries compatibility. If you missed it, I put a video out earlier this week, Aries in Love, so make sure to check that out. Um, but basically in this video, I'm just going to be going over how Aries matches up with Aries through Pisces. Also, I'm going to be giving each pairing a rating between one heart and three hearts, one being the lowest rating, maybe not the best match, three hearts being uh, the best match <laughs> or rating in my personal opinion. I'm just going to be posting those on the screen, so just keep an eye out for that. So let's begin with Aries and Aries. So as with a lot of same sign um, combinations, this could really be a hit or a miss. The thing with these two is that they're both going to be able to provide excitement and enthusiasm, you know, for each other in the relationship and towards each other as well. There may be a lot of arguing, but there's also going to be a lot of passion there. And, you know, they'll be able to argue and then have that passion to make up and smooth things over. They like to play games, each of them, and they both like to get their own way, so that can definitely be an issue in the relationship. It can be just tough for them to get to a seriously committed you know, part of a relationship or to get into a committed relationship because compromise can just be difficult for the two of them. Again, both can be impatient and a bit impulsive, so it can just be tough to settle down when neither is like that stable force that the other one needs. If they are able to settle down, um, because you guys know I always say charts play a big part into this, it's not just like the sun sign, but if they are able to settle down then they can have a really fun, exciting relationship that could really work out, you know, fantastic. They can, you know, keep a fast pace with each other and be what the other person needs. They just have to be careful that that intensity and competition doesn't get so intense that the pairing just crashes and burns. Okay, so next we have Aries and Taurus. So they are a sign apart from one another. And what that tells us is that there can be a lot of issues right off the bat. They might not initially like each other or they don't initially get along. You know, Aries can be very quick moving, like I keep saying, and Taurus is like the complete opposite, is that they're very slow moving, they take their time, um, they like to be set in routines, whereas Aries likes change and likes to be constantly being entertained and not being bored. At first, Aries might find Taurus very intriguing because Taurus can be very romantic and sensual and that can be a turn on for an Aries who likes the romance part of relationships and Taurus can be interested in Aries because again they provide excitement they are direct they say what's on their mind um, but eventually it'd be tough for these two to stay together because both are gonna want different things um, Taurus likes to know that there's gonna be a point of settling down and Aries hates to commit <laughs> or it will take them a long time Taurus can be patient and can wait out you know in Aries but again this will be a tough one because they're both so different from one another. So eventually, you know, Taurus can be the type to wait out an Aries and um, be okay with them taking a long time to commit because they themselves take a while as well. But Aries, you know, might get bored with Taurus. They might feel like Taurus, you know, doesn't want to try new things. And Taurus might feel like Aries never wants to settle down, just chill out and relax. So this might be a hard pairing, you know, it can be successful, but it seems like a tricky one. Next we have Aries and Gemini. So this is one of those pairings that, you know, the two will probably instantly click and there'll be a lot of, you know, quick attraction. Both are very quick, um, both are bored very easily, both are always seeking, you know, entertainment. Um, Aries more in a physical way and Gemini more in a mental, intellectual way. So they definitely can have things they connect on. This could be a good relationship, but it also could go south very easily as well. So here you have two people that are constantly on the hunt to be entertained and find excitement and just, you know, see boredom as death. The two could really provide the excitement that the other one needs, you know, in order to stay in a relationship, but it's going to be hard for both of them to settle down with each other because, again, commitment can be tough for both, you know, an Aries and a Gemini. Another issue that might present it Itself is like I said, Aries likes to connect on more of a physical level, they like that physical affection, they like to be competitive, um, whereas Gemini likes to connect, you know, more intellectually, mentally, and that can be kind of an issue between the two of them. Gemini and Aries also both can be a little bit full of themselves at times, <laughs> so they might get irritated with each other for thinking, you know, that one is better than the other, but it might also provide some healthy competition that both of them actually like. 
So ultimately I would say that this one is right in the middle. There can definitely be some issues and it'll be hard for them to kind of harbor down, hunker down, and stay in the relationship for the long haul, but there can be a lot of excitement and fun for the two of them, especially at the beginning of things. Next we have Aries and Cancer. Aries and Cancer can be a tricky one. Um, it, again, all of these could have potential to work out, especially based on other aspects of the chart. But the issue here is that Aries, you know, likes their room to play. They like games. They like that kind of thing. Cancer, on the other hand, hates rejection. They don't like to feel like there's no security. They like to feel secure. They don't want to be kept guessing. They kind of want to know, you know, what's going to happen in a relationship. Another thing is, like I said in my Aries in Love video, Aries is not the type to get down and dirty and talk about, you know, feelings and emotions and stuff. And that's kind of what cancer is all about and how they connect with people. So the two of them can definitely clash when it comes to connecting with one another. They might not feel like they can really understand each other. And again, Aries can be the type. They like to flirt to make people jealous and cancer can be very jealous as can Aries. So that can be another issue for the two of them. Cancer wants to feel like their partner is somebody that they can lean on, somebody that they can trust. And Aries might not be that person person for them and it might be too many games, too much fun, too much, you know, too much back and forth and Cancer might not like that. On the other hand, Aries probably isn't going to like that Cancer, you know, doesn't really give them the space that they need. Cancer can be a little bit clingy and Aries just doesn't like that. Um, they don't mind, you know, coming to the rescue and that can be an initial attraction for both of them. But ultimately, it's going to be really hard for these two to settle down. You know, another issue is that Cancer is kind of a homebody, whereas Aries is always out exploring the world. So, you know, they could be attracted to each other off the bat, whereas Aries is very exciting to Cancer, and Cancer can be very interesting to an Aries. When it comes to Cancer, you know, one thing that... Cancer will like about Aries is the fact that Aries can be very complimentary when they're in love with somebody and very flattering and Cancer loves to be admired um, and so that's something that they will definitely enjoy about Aries and it can definitely help the relationship move forward but this relationship will be a tough match to work out. Next we have Aries and Leo. So this is a pairing where the two meet each other and they kind of have like that <sighs> somebody on my level, somebody that gets me, somebody that I can understand and just, you know, hang with. So right off the bat, they'll probably be quite the attraction, quite the spark. Um, the two of them will just kind of hit it off right away. The two can just be very exciting for one another. Um, Ari, they're both very competitive. They both are very into, you know, who their partner is. So together they can be quite dynamic and that they both are looking for somebody that they can show off so they like to be in a relationship that they're constantly you know they're kind of like the envy of their friends if that makes sense they can have a lot of energy together but both you know especially the leo can be known to take some downtime away from all the fun and excitement and extravagance and that will be good for aries because they can encourage them to sometimes slow down as well both of them will be the type to flatter and appreciate the other and be very you know admiring and both of their egos definitely like that <laughs> so they can definitely be the type to really you know give the other what they need in terms of that department both can be risk takers so that's something that they should be careful of especially you know encouraging one another um because neither you know aries jumps into things head first and doesn't really think things through before they do them and leo on the other hand just likes to live on the edge and really experience like life you know, to its fullest to the point where sometimes it can be dangerous and they just happen to be drawn to things like that. So the two of them together can be a dangerous pairing, but they can also be very exciting, you know, very energetic, like a spark of energy between them. Um, and Leo can kind of be the one that helps them settle down into a serious relationship because they're all about loyalty and they ultimately want to be in a relationship. As long as Leo has the patience to wait for an Aries to commit, and Aries, you know, isn't trying to make Leo jealous all the time because Leo will not like that, <laughs> then these two can definitely have a really fun and exciting relationship as long as they just take it easy and don't go too far. Next we have Aries and Virgo. These can be, these two can be that pairing that kind of just like works out and nobody understands why. They might seem so different from one another, but somehow they just mesh well. 
So these are the two like Aries, you know, likes to jump first, think about it later. Air Virgo thinks about everything and analyzes like every little detail before they do a darn thing at all. So that actually might be a good thing for both of them. Aries can encourage Virgo to lighten up a bit, whereas Virgo can, you know, kind of tell Aries when to step back and think things through. Be an attraction there, like I said, that neither can explain, but that feels right for both of them. Both of these two, you know, like to communicate a lot and talk a lot, and they can definitely have like long, interesting conversations together. Virgo and Aries both tend to go for people that need savings, so neither one of them is really that person for the other, but these two can have a good relationship. Aries can keep from being too rigid and too boring, dare I say. And Virgo can keep Aries, you know, like I said, more on track and not being so wild all the time. They might have to work a little to keep the spark alive, but they can definitely be a good pairing. Aries won't like that Virgo can be a bit critical, but honestly, they might need it sometimes just because they can get a bit, you know, of a big head. And Virgo might not like that Aries, you know, says things that just seem a little brash and, you know, totally out there, but sometimes it can be interesting for them. So ultimately, you know, these two can work out, but it will be a little bit of a challenging pairing, but one that could definitely be successful. Next we have Aries and Libra. These two are opposites of the Zodiac, so, you know, like I always say, they can just, like, attract to each other like glue, or they can come together and, you know, blow apart. And here with Aries and Libra, they definitely could be a good match, but there's some issues. For one, Aries loves to play games, like I said earlier in my previous video, and Libra loves the games as well, even though they might not admit it. Both of them like that feeling of, the, you know, the chase and being someone that's hard to get. Libra can be the one that's hard to get, whereas Aries loves the chase, but it can also go the other way around and work just as well. Libra can be quite indecisive, whereas Aries tends to be pretty decisive and direct, so they can kind of be the one that takes charge in the relationship in, like, the decision-making aspect. Libra, on the other hand, you know, can be more balanced and think things through a bit and they can kind of be the one to push for the relationship to become more of a committed one even if Aries isn't quite ready. Um, Aries can provide all that excitement that Libra craves. Libra can also be very exciting for Aries. The two of them love the part of the romance in the relationship and as long as that part continues this can be a really you know beneficial relationship for both in that way. Both of them can be quite charming and they'll really like that about one another. Um, they both know how to, you know, be flirtatious and they might like all the games like flirting with somebody else in front of the other one to make the other one jealous. But one thing that could be an issue is that Aries will not like that Libra, you know, Libra can be social, they, are, they like to talk, they like to be social, but they are, don't always like to hang with like big groups, whereas Aries likes to constantly be finding like the next exciting thing, and sometimes that can be a little bit of an issue. Aries kind of wishes that Libra would just make up their mind once in a while and not let opportunities pass them by because they're not, you know, they don't make a decision quick enough to decide to jump into things, whereas Libra feels like Aries sometimes can just be too quick and... They might have a bit of a temper, they might just not follow through with things that they say they're going to do because sometimes Aries speaks out without thinking and neither is going to like these qualities about each other, but ultimately this can be a really great, happy, you know, exciting pairing. Next we have Aries and Scorpio. So these two, you know, initially there's going to be quite the attraction. Um, like I said, Aries loves the game and Scorpio likes the game in a different sort of way. Scorpio likes to investigate another person and kind of like get their secrets and go as deep down as they can, um, especially when they meet someone else. And Aries is direct, but they're also very exciting and they can definitely play that game in the beginning of the relationship that keeps Scorpio intrigued. And Scorpio can be very secretive and mysterious, which keeps Aries intrigued. One thing that's going to be an issue is that Scorpio, like I say in a lot of my videos, needs to feel like they have control in the relationship, and Aries isn't always somebody that likes to be controlled. They like to feel like they're getting their own way. 
Now, that can be a compromise, the two of them can eventually work out, um, but it definitely can create an issue. Aries, you know, likes to be on the go a lot, they can be flirtatious, they can be charming, they are very social. And Scorpio is very jealous, as Aries can be as well, um, but they're not going to like that, you know, Aries doesn't want to just spend all their time together. So there can definitely be some issues with the hair. Aries, you know, is going to like that Scorpio can be a little bit possessive because they don't like to feel like anybody, you know, has control or is taking ownership over them. Aries likes their way, Scorpio definitely has, you know, their set in their ways. So if they can come to a compromise, they can be, you know, a sensual, probably sexual couple. Um, but it will be a tough go of it. Next we have Aries and Sagittarius. So these two can be like a really fun match. They're both fire signs, so like with Leo, they feel like somebody that finally gets me. Here, you know, Sagittarius isn't quite as dangerous of a pairing with Aries as like a Leo would be. These two can definitely have fun together. They are both athletic, or they tend to be. They tend to be into the same sorts of things. They both want to explore the world together. You know, Aries and Sagittarius can both be very direct. Sagittarius can be quite blunt and Aries kind of knows what they want or thinks they do, at least at the time. So that can actually work in their favor, whereas there's no like weird secrets going on for the most part. There might not be as much game playing and fun and excitement in terms of the beginning of the relationship for the Aries, but Sagittarius can be a little scattered and all over the place and sometimes that can be sort of a turn-on for Aries. These two can definitely have a connection, um, and neither is going to make the other feel like, you know, they're being possessed or that they're too clingy because they can both give each other the space that they both need, and they both can come together and explore the world and talk about, you know, all the interesting things in it, or show each other and teach each other, and then they can go out on their own and kind of come back when they need to, you know, like go out on their own to recharge and come back and enjoy each other again. So this relationship can definitely be a good one. There's really not too many issues that could probably pop up. The only thing is that it might be hard for the two of them to settle down into a serious committed relationship because they're both always kind of exploring and doing their own things. It might be hard for you know one or the other to get the relationship to a more serious point. So now we have Aries and Capricorn. So Aries can kind of be a little bit too all over the place for Capricorn, you know, and they get bored easily, like I keep saying, um, which makes games inevitable, obviously. You know, Capricorns might not be, like, exciting enough for Aries, um, and Capricorn might be a little bit too traditional, whereas Aries makes things that are new, um, untried, you know, exciting and different. Capricorn likes to move slow, whereas Aries moves, you know, at the fastest pace ever. They both are ambitious though, which is something I haven't really mentioned, you know, about Aries yet. So, and they're also both natural leaders, so that could be a bonding thing, but it could also create more of a clash than a companionship because it will create, you know, a competitiveness that neither one is going to be able to let the other one win, so it'll just, you know, cause some issues. <laughs> but, you know, they could definitely find um, a common ground there. Aries can provide a lot of excitement for Capricorn, and Capricorn can provide the stability that Aries really needs to have like a long-term commi committed relationship. So again, this could potentially work, but there's going to be like a lot of tension and areas that would need a lot of attention in order for this to be successful. Aquarius and Aries. This pairing might seem like it would be a great one right off the bat, and it definitely has the potential to be one, but there could be a lot of differences that could, you know, bring up some issues between the two of them. Firstly, you know, the two might hit it off right away and become, like, really quick friends. They each kind of will feel like the other speaks the same language and they find it very easy to connect to one another. Especially whereas there's no pressure to, like, dive into, like, emotions and feelings with either of them because neither is into that sort of thing. You know, they both tend to be independent. They can understand this in one another and give each other the space they need. They're independent in different sort of ways. They both need their freedom, though, and they can both you know, give that to each other. Cause the other to feel like they can't, you know, spread their wings. Again, here's another pairing where they both bore very easily and they constantly need something, you know, new to get their attention. And it'll be tough for the two of them to anchor down a relationship when neither is really the one to jump into a committed relationship um, without a bit of a struggle, a bit of a battle. They're both the type who are kind of always going to be off doing their own things. And yes, this could work, but it could also, you know, just 
keep the relationship from ever happening or moving forward. Aries likes to jump into things immediately, as I keep saying, and this can almost be too quick for Aquarius, who likes to, you know, take their time and analyze like a Virgo before they get into things. These two will have fun and excitement and just a general understanding of each other, but the focus for them to last might just not be there. Pisces and Aries. This is one where, you know, it might start out strong, but it kind of might fizzle with time. And, you know, first, like I said earlier, signs that are next to each other, so we talk talked about Taurus with Aries, now we're talking about the opposite end of the spectrum. They just have a bit of an issue getting along right off the bat, and they might notice that they kind of can't really agree right away with each other when they first meet. So, you know, initially they're going to interest each other, and there's going to be, you know, this excitement, this thrill. Pisces will like, you know, Aries zest for life, and Aries will be intrigued by the mystery that is a Pisces. As the relationship progresses, Aries isn't really like the most nurturing type. Um, they... If they're in love, I mean, they can definitely be, like I said in the Aries in Love video, they can be very flattering and they can give a lot of attention, but it takes a while to get there and they're just not the type that's going to sit and talk about feelings and stuff like that. Pisces really needs that in a relationship and Aries, on the other hand, really needs their space. Whereas Pisces likes to spend time with their significant other, Aries would rather, you know, have enough time away to be able to enjoy their time together. So, I mean, they could work out, but Pisces will probably make Aries feel a little bit suffocated, and Aries might make Pisces, you know, feel not important enough. So that is Aries compatibility. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one, and as always, have a good day or night.